<clears throat> Psalms chapter 22. To the chief musician upon Ajilith Shar, a psalm of David. And it's called the Hind of Mourning. This is a psalm about the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary. This is spoken in prophecy that David's a prophet of the inspiration of God that David will never see. David will never witness what he's writing. David has no idea what he's writing. And you got to wonder sometimes after they wrote, they put it on the paper and they wanted to scratch your head like, what was that? And it would be foolish for them to say, oh, they're looking forward to the cross. David and all the men of the Old Testament had no idea what a cross was. When the Messiah showed up with all the prophecies of the first coming from the time that he was born and con conceived and born to the time that he, he rose from the grave, they still didn't believe and didn't know who he was. His own disciples, when they hear the news from the women, he is risen from the grave, we have been told by two angels. Yeah, right, sure. Do you hear those lies of those, those, those two guys going to, to Emmaus? Do you hear those, those two women? They, they, they saw Jesus. Yeah, right. And they sat down and had a meal with Jesus, and they're talking about the scriptures, and they didn't even know who Jesus was until Jesus finally you know, broke the bread, and then he disappeared. Yeah, David's writing about Jesus on the cross, but David doesn't know what he's writing. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46, Mark 15, 34. What's that for David? David's been chased. David's been wandering. David's been on the run. David has enemies. David has enemies. David has enemies. David's being attacked. David's got his family against him. David's got troubles. David's got problems. He doesn't know about Jesus. And David becomes a type of Jesus Christ, and David becomes a prophet by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, men wrote the Bible by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, because David would not know anything. But the Bible says God sees the end from the beginning. And we have read Psalms where David says, Lord, won't you answer me? And we know God answers. And David here is God. You are not listening to me. You're not helping me. Jesus, that moment that Jesus became sin, the heavens are dark, and the Father couldn't even look at the Son. That moment that Jesus became our sin. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because of sin. That's the cup. Why art thou so far from helping me? Because he had to die on the cross. David may have to learn a lesson. David had to learn that, you know, God is long-suffering. David had to learn that God is patient. And many men have problems with that. God, you're not answering my prayer. He will. Or maybe he said no. Maybe he said not now. And from the words of my roaring, Lord, I'm speaking to you. Lord, I'm in desperate. Lord, I... Oh, my God. The world calls it OMG. Oh my God is an expression of I've got troubles. Or how great thou art. Oh my God, look at the answer to me. Oh my God, I'm in trouble. Imagine an atheist saying, Oh my God. I cry in the daytime. But thou hearest not. That's verse one for David. And in the night season, I'm calling upon you all the time, God, where are you? And I am, and when I call in the night season, am not silent. God, I am talking to you, I'm speaking to you, God, in the day and at night. But thou art holy, true. O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Israel is God's people. Israel is a praise God. Our fathers trusted in thee, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
They trusted and thou didst deliver them. Lord, look what you did. Lord, look at the testing. Look what the Bible says, Lord. Quote the scriptures to God. And quote them right. Don't you dare mis misapplica uh, misapplication of scriptures when you're quoting to God in your troubles and problems. You can call on the scripture for, for the thing you're, you're dealing with. Call upon it and it better be right. You got, you got misery. You got, you know, no comfort because, because of the death of a loved one. Say, Lord Jesus, don't you remember? That's the first time you ever cried. You got pain and misery. Lord, remember what they did to you? Remember how hurtful and how painful it was for you? Lord, I don't think you're answering me. Remember David, how much he called upon you? Lord, you deliver our fathers. Deliver me. That's what he's saying. They, their fathers, cried unto thee and were delivered. And they trusted thee. The fact is that God, our fathers, called upon you, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes. They called upon you. Joseph called upon you. They called upon you in Egypt. Moses called upon you. Aaron called upon you. And you answered them. And when you answered them, the result was they trusted in you. And we're not confounded. Here's Jesus. But I am a worm and no man. He's God and man. A reproach of men. Man, they hated Jesus. And men hated David. And despise of the people. Mark 15, 29 to 32. Matthew 27, 39 to 46. Man, the people he hated, I mean, the people he healed, they hated. Where were all the people that he healed at the cross? And it's foolish to say, oh, if I would have been back there at Calvary, I would have been rooting for Jesus. No, you wouldn't. You'd be, you'd be rejecting him just like Peter did. Well, you think you're better than Peter? You think you're better than John? He said the whole world will forsake me. Jesus again, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. And you read about that. They were mocking him. Come on, you trust him. We're going to see that more. You trust in God. Let God call you down. Let's see if Elias will come for him. They shoot up their lip. They shake their head. Oh, look, at that. Look, at, look at that guy up there. That's our Savior. He's going to die in any moment. That's the that's the king of Israel. Look above the look at look at that's above his head. The king of the Jews. Really, he's gonna die. Look at him bleeding. Look at him suffer. He can save others, but he can't save himself. Is what they were saying. Oh boy, knock it off. Yeah, let's go home. And it, Jesus, he trusted Matthew twenty seven forty three, Luke twenty three thirty five. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him God deliver him. Seeing he delighteth in him. And that was the priest. Come on, if you're the son of God, come off the cross and we'll believe on you. If he came off that cross, there would be no salvation. But thou art he that looketh that look at yeah, he that but thou art he that took me out of the womb. Jesus. God designed that womb of Mary for him. That womb was designed by no man, but the Holy Spirit and the egg of Mary. Thou didst make me hope <coughs> when I was upon my mother's breast. Jesus Christ was 100% man. Jesus Christ needed to be breastfed. Jesus Christ slept. Jesus Christ thirst. Jesus Christ got hungry. Jesus Christ got worried. Jesus Christ weary. Jesus Christ got uh, tears. Jesus Christ got angry, but he didn't sin. Job said, Do you have eyes like I have? Do you have a mouth? Yeah, pretty soon, when Jesus Christ would become. I was cast out, I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly, Jesus and Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah chapter 1. There you go for abortion. Is there life in the womb? Psalms 22, 10, about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that there's life in the womb. And God has called that life in the womb. Listen, Hebrews says that Levi, long before Levi was even, even thought of, in Abraham, Isaac hadn't been born yet. Jacob had not been born yet. Levi, I mean, uh, yeah, Levi hadn't been born yet. Uh, Leah hadn't been born yet. And the Hebrew says that, that Levi gave tithes to Abraham to Melchizedek. That's like before, 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 before the womb. And God has a purpose for all of us. I think God so called me into the ministry. When I look at my baby book, I see times where Satan tried to kill me. I see where Satan tried to get me away. Everyone that's born in the womb, God says, uh, God's not willing that any should perish. God wants everybody born of a womb to be saved, but he knows that's not possible. Be not far from me. God the Father was with Jesus all the time until sin became on him. David saying, God, I need your help. For trouble is near. For David, definitely. For Jesus, all the time. For there is none to help. Jesus says, I thirst, and they gave him vinegar. What, what, what a relief. Jesus went to a woman, and he said, he goes, I thirst. When did he ever get that water? Jesus took Barabbas' place. When did anybody ever help Jesus? Jesus says, I don't even have a place to lay my head. When did somebody give a bed to Jesus? Give, there was no room for Jesus when he was born. In the world standards, Jesus was a failure. Oh, but he's sitting in glory today at the right hand of the Father being praised. Here's what God, here's what God says about religion. Many bulls have compassed me. Ezekiel 2, 6, Matthew 23, 33. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. These are all the people sitting around the, the, the cross mocking and making fun of Jesus, watching him as a good show. They gape upon me with their mouths. As a reverend, First uh, Peter five eight, reverend and a roaring lion. There's a devil. The people that were at the cross of Jesus that night, that afternoon, that night, were just just like the devil. They were looking for failure. They were mocking him so he would come down off that cross. He had the power. He said, "Listen, I could call legions of angels if I wanted to." It would be to our failure, not his. I mean, he could go up to heaven, Father, say, well, what happened? He, Father, you don't know how, how wicked that sin is. Okay. I am poured out like water. No substance. He was battered and bruised and broken. And all my bones are out of joint. Now, they're not broken. The Bible said not a bone of him was broken. But where there were joints, they're dislocated. The bones are not broken, but the joints in the body, we call that dislocated. He was hurt and injured to the bone. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my balls. That means his heart is just breaking. And then he pierced that, that, that spirit in his side. And just blood and water just gushed out. And they say that's a sign of a broken heart. 
Imagine he's up there in that cross and he's dying for all the world and all the world is mocking and hating him. And he's now going to take on sin. He was no happy camper. Jesus again, John 19, 28. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt. That's a broken piece of pottery. That's what Job used to scrape off the boils and the pus. So I'm just a piece of pottery just dry and hard and broken that's his skin that is his muscles that is his flesh broken open by the cat of nine tails by the thorns my tongue cleaveth to my jaws he hasn't anything to drink he's in the garden in the middle of the night and he ends up on Calvary's cross coming to nighttime, 6 p.m. I doubt they gave him anything to drink in front of the Sanhedrin. I doubt the Romans gave him anything. That has brought me to the dust of death. They, Jesus died. For dogs. First Peter says that's unclean. As pigs, unclean women. Have compassed me. I, I'm surrounded by a bunch of unclean dogs, heathen. I'm surrounded by Gentiles, Romans. Peter says the unclean dog is an unclean prophet. I've got false prophets all around me. The assembly of the wicked, the wicked have enclosed me. My congregation of me on the cross is filled with wickedness. They're not looking for the mercy of, of Jesus, looking for the death of Jesus. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, where is that to be David? That's not David. John 20, 25. Come on, you need to see David. Oh, yeah, I'm writing about Jesus. They're going to put nails in his. All right, David, what's a cross? I don't know. What is a cross? Looking forward to it. I may tell all my bones. Not a bone was left behind, Joseph. Not a bone was broken. And I would get the implication. I could be wrong here. But they whipped him so hard that he looked at his, oh, yeah, there's that bone right there. Well, there's that bone. Yep, that's my kneecap. Man, he wasn't just beaten. He was beaten. They looked and stared upon me in amazement. Look at that bleeding pussy vileness of that man that's on that cross. He is just a bloody mess. The Sanhedrin and the Romans had a time with that bloody. That's God. That guy, it looks worse than somebody's going 2,000 rounds in a boxing ring. And he thinks he's God. He's broken and beaten. Even the disciples thought he lost. You couldn't draw a picture of how bad Jesus was. They parted my garments among them. And cast lots upon my vesture. Matthew 27, 35. Mark 15, 24. Luke 23. Can you just see... John 19, 20. can you just see David sitting there? Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to take his robe, and they're, they're going to take this, and they're going to, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to have the highest card draw to see who gets the robe. I trow not. I can just imagine David writing that. When did they part from my, maybe Absalom when, when, when his father was led, I don't know. But for the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't see Calvary. Verse 18 tells us that Jesus Christ was stark naked on that cross. But be not thou far from me. That's David saying to, to God. And Jesus knows the Father is going to, to shun him away because of sin. O oh Lord, my strength, haste thee to help me. That's Jesus. I need help. I need strength. 
Father, you don't know how bad this sin and wickedness it is because we never sinned. We're holy and righteous. Father, you said, be ye perfect for I am perfect. And you don't realize what sin is not perfect. It is not us. Deliver my soul from the sword. David being chased in war. My darling from the power of the dog. <laughs> There's the Gentiles again. Unclean animals. The Roman government. Peter has, I mean, Peter, David has no idea what Rome is. I don't even think Babylon was around. Save me from the lion's mouth. There's that devil again. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Oh, Jesus Christ. David believed in unicorns. I always thought it would be funny if that white horse that Jesus gets on in Revelation 19, if that would be a unicorn. That'd be funny. Notice it says plural unicorns. Jesus, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, Jewish people, disciples, and the people of Israel. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's what David did too. In the midst of the congregation, will I praise thee? That's exactly what David and Jesus done. Ye that fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. Praise him, God. All ye seed of Jacob, Israel, glorify him, God, and fear him. All ye seed of Israel. What's that command of David? He came unto his own, but his own received him not. Israel, the purpose of Israel is to glorify the Lord and to glorify Jesus Christ. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Jesus Christ turned nobody away. No one. But they turned him away. Neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried into him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. Israel is a great congregation. It says, as, as far as the stars of the heavens and the sand of the sea. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. Well, Jesus had no vows. David did. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. You seek God and do what God does to you, you got a forever heart. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. That's the, that's the second advent in the millennium. In a Calvary psalm. So I guess David can see Jesus sitting on the throne. I guess David can see that temple that's going to be built in the millennium. He hasn't even seen Solomon's temple. For the kingdom is the Lord's. That's the millennial kingdom. That's not the kingdom any today. And he is the governor among the nations. That's Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords. David will be the prince. All they that be fat. That doesn't mean fat and overweight. That means they got great substance. Upon earth shall eat and worship. And all that go down to dust, death, shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. You're at the mercy of God. If God says it's time for you to die, it's time for you to die no matter how much CPR you do. No matter what the doctors or the medics can do. God says it's it. It's it. I assume that in the millennium, there are going to be people who are going to be rich. And the rich will worship the Lord God, Jesus. A seed... Israel shall serve him, God, Jesus. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. Israel will come to worship Jesus at one time. They're not worshiping at Calvary. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto the people that shall be born. Millennium. Or the apostles and Christians, maybe, too. 
that he has done this. Has done what? He suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. According to what? He has returned the second advent like the scriptures said he would. He has set up the millennial kingdom with Israel back on top again, as the scriptures had said. There'll be people born in the millennium, and they'll be telling the tales of Jesus. They won't be telling the tales of Santa Claus and Easter Bunny and all that nonsense. 